Black Panther Party leader Mark Clark was born June 28, 1947. He was the ninth child out of William and Fanny Clark's 17 children. Mark was their seventh son. As a child, Mark Clark attended Lincoln Elementary School in Peoria, Illinois. He later attended Manual High School. Mark Clark joined the Peoria chapter of the NAACP in his early teens where he displayed leadership abilities with the youth. According to NAACP chapter president John Gwynn, Mark called youth to order when adults could not. Mark Clark had the tenacity to engage in a revolutionary struggle for justice and liberation. He joined the Black Panther Party organizing the Peoria chapter in early 1969. Black Panther Party leader Clark motivated inner city youth to dedicate themselves to the Black Panther Party 10-point program, platform, and initiatives. Mark Clark routinely required the Peoria Black Panther Party recruits to participate in marching exercises designed to help achieve greater discipline and unity. Peoria recruits monitored the neighborhood and sold the Black Panther Party newspapers, which highlighted party initiatives and exposed police fascism and brutality. Mark Clark established the Black Panther Party Free Breakfast Program in Peoria, which operated out of Peoria's Ward Chapel AME Church facilities. The Peoria BPP prepared breakfast for the children and distributed food bags to needy and elderly in the inner city. Eventually, church officials began receiving threats from suspected undercover FBI operatives, forcing them to discontinue the program. Mark Clark traveled back and forth from Peoria to Chicago, where he met with Chairman Fred Hampton Sr., leader of the Chicago, Illinois chapter of the BPP, and other members of the Black Panther Party, sometimes bringing recruits from the Peoria chapter to Chicago for political education classes led by Chairman Fred. Fearing the unification of black leadership and the success of the Black Panthers Free Breakfast Program, Free People's Medical Clinic, and political education classes, FBI officials deemed the Black Panther Party to be the number one threat to the security of the nation. FBI set up a special task force to focus on eliminating the Black Panthers. Members of the Black Panther Party were maliciously charged with serious crimes. Some were given lengthy prison sentences. Other Black Panthers were killed by police in cities and towns throughout the nation. The FBI COINTELPRO unit devised a plan to eliminate Chairman Fred Hampton Sr. after deeming him a potential Black Messiah because of his influence on the Black masses and rainbow coalitions. In order to obtain their objective, the FBI conspired together with the U.S. Justice Department Chicago Police Department, and Cook County State's Attorney's Office. A raid was planned on the pretense that there were guns in Chairman Fred's 2337 West Monroe Street apartment on Chicago's South Side. FBI agent Roy Mitchell met with informant William O'Neill, who gave him a floor plan of the Monroe Street apartment to show where Chairman Fred was sleeping. He was paid 300 bonus for the floor plan and 17000 for ongoing detailed information on the Chicago, Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party and its comrades. The information William O'Neill provided included detailed descriptions of Black Panther Party members in their daily routine. Agent Mitchell passed on all the information he received to a special racial matters unit. Richard Jolivet coordinated with Sergeant Daniel Groff and infamous Chicago police officer James Gloves Davis and the other policemen in the special police unit. The assassination of Black Panther Party leaders Chairman Fred Hampton Sr. and Defense Captain Mark Clark occurred in Chicago, Illinois on December 4, 1969 at approximately 4.45 a.m. The Cook County State Attorney Edward Hanrahan initiated the gun raid. There were 14 officers on the Special Racials Matter Squad. Eight officers entered at the front of the apartment and six officers at the back. 
Police rushed inside the front of the apartment and began spraying the walls with gunfire. The submachine guns penetrated the walls of Chairman Fred Hampton Sr. and his pregnant fiancé's bedroom. Defense Captain Mark Clark was in the living room in a chair when police forcibly kicked the door open and began shooting without warning. Mark Clark was shot twice, once in the heart and once in the lung, and he was killed instantly. Chairman Fred Hampton Sr. was asleep in the back bedroom with his pregnant fiance when he was shot in the shoulder from the submachine gunfire that penetrated through the wall. His pregnant fiance, unable to wake him, was hurried out of the back bedroom into the kitchen. Several policemen entered the bedroom where they shot Chairman Fred several more times. Chairman Fred Hampton Sr. was shot a total of four times, twice in the head at point blank range. An officer was heard to have said, he's good and dead now. Police continued to spray the apartment. There were 99 submachine gunshots fired by police resulting in the assassinations and serious injury of several other Black Panther Party members. Funeral service for Chairman Fred Hampton Sr. was held on December 9, 1969 at First Baptist Church in Melrose Park, Illinois. 5,000 people attended. Mark Clark's body was transported to his hometown, Peoria, Illinois and its funeral service was held Saturday, December 13, 1969, at Freedom Hall in Peoria. Hundreds of people attended the solemn funeral service. Members of the Black Panther Party wore black leather jackets and black berets. Mark Clark was buried at Springdale Cemetery in Peoria. Even in death, he wore the black leather jacket and black beret, the aesthetics of the Black Panther Party and symbolic of his revolutionary struggle. It would take 13 years of trials and appeals going all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court before the families of Mark Clark and Fred Hampton were awarded a civil judgment. In 1983, a settlement of $1.85 million was reached, most of which went to attorney fees. No police or FBI operatives was held criminally responsible as the government gave FBI operatives qualified immunity. The extent of the government's infiltration of the Black Panther Party may never be fully known. The cover-up, conflicting testimonies of witnesses, and court documents brought into question witnesses' accounts of the raid. The evidence revealed that while 99 bullet rounds were shot by police, there was only one bullet found in the apartment the ceiling that was deemed to have been linked to a Panther's gun. This contradicted police accounts that there was a shootout, proving that the raid was instead a shoot-in. The FBI counterintelligence program was later found to have targeted prominent black leaders considered influential in an attempt to stop the rise of a black messiah who could unify and electrify the black people. The assassination of Black Panther Party leader Defense Captain Mark Clark, along with Chairman Fred Hampton Sr., leader of the Chicago chapter of the Black Panther Party by the U.S. government, still remains fresh in the minds of our people more than 50 years later. Their willingness to struggle for liberation has cemented their legacy among the vanguard of the revolution.